So if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm a big Vim fanboy. I really like Vim, and I proclaim the superiority of Vim to all people. And I would even go so far as to say I'm a bit of a Vim elitist. I will very happily look down on people who use Nano. I know it's a bad trait, and I try not to do it, but sometimes I just can't help it. If you use Nano, I'm at least going to begin our conversation by judging you just a bit. And trying to get you to use Vim is definitely something that's going to happen. But that's not why we're here today. What I want to talk about instead is about how hard Vim actually is. And talk a little bit about the experience of actually using Vim for actual text editing. Because if you're just the casual text editor and you just need to pop into a text editor every once in a while, it doesn't really matter what text editor that you choose. They will all do the job just fine even Nano, even Micro, whatever you want to choose, they'll all do really well. And for the most part, you'll get into those programs, you'll edit your text, you'll leave, and you won't think about it again. But for people who actually spend their time in a text editor, the choice of text editor is a very personal choice. And I think that that is because you just spend so much time in it that it really does impact your workflow. How the text editor moves around, how it flows through your workflow is just so important. And that's why if you've spent so much time in Vim and you've worked to develop a workflow inside of Vim, it's really hard to move to something that works completely differently because it's going to be a completely different workflow even though you're technically doing the same work. You know, so the choice of text editor is very personal for a lot of people. And that's one of the reasons why you have Vim fanboys. It's why you have Emacs fanboys. It's why you have people who really enjoy things like VS Code and stuff like that. And those types of people are very proud of their accomplishments inside of those text editors. So if you've watched any number of Vim videos on YouTube, you will find a lot of people who are very proud about their ability to use Vim very well, right? Same thing with Emacs. If you've watched people who use Emacs uh, in their YouTube videos, you'll see that they're very proud of the stuff that they can do inside of Emacs. And some of that pride is earned, right? Because at the end of the day, Vim is kind of hard once you get past the basics. Vim Tutor is fantastic and it will teach you all the basic stuff that you'll ever need to know. If all you ever know is the stuff that comes out of Vim Tutor, you're going to be just fine. There's quite a bit of stuff in there that's really good. It's when you want to expand past that that you find that Vim is pretty complicated because there's just a ton of different ways of doing things. And there's not really one way that's necessarily better than the other. But if you want to do something in Vim, there's probably 10 ways of doing it. And that's a conservative number, probably, simply because there are multiple combinations. Like if you want to skip forward five words... You know, there's at least three ways of doing that. If you want to select those words, you know, there's another three ways of doing that or whatever. And then if you want to do other things with that text, like capitalize each word in that sentence or whatever, you can do that. And that takes another uh, amount of key bindings or another key, uh, set of keystrokes. You know, it, it's just one thing right after another. And that's just one set of text. And it could be literally any number of things, you know, from macros to jumping around between search terms, whatever. So... Vim is very complicated once you get past those initial steps. And that's part of the reason why the pride of being able to do a lot of this stuff comes in. Now, here's where we get into a bit of my story. So I've been using Vim now for at least three years. And the thing is, is that I go back and forth between considering myself a really bad Vim user and a really good Vim user. And usually it depends on how many people I've seen use Vim other than me on YouTube in the last month or so. If I've taken a long break of from watching people use Vim, I consider myself pretty good at it. Even though I know that instinctively there's so much stuff inside of Vim that I don't either know how to do or just kind of ignore because I'm not used to those key bindings or the certain keystrokes that you need to do in order to do those things. There are way easier ways of doing a lot of the stuff that I do inside of Vim that I just don't know about or haven't trained myself to use. So I know that when it comes to actual Vim usage, I am a medium, middle of the road Vim user. And my pride in that is hopefully proportional to my actual skill level. I hope it is. 
But some days I think I'm king of the road. I'm the big cheese when it comes to Vim stuff. And I know that I'm not really, but some days I act like that. On other days, and usually these are the days where I've gone searching for like the Primogen or any of the other Vim users on YouTube and watched them use Vim. And I'm like, man, I don't know shit about Vim. <laughs> and that's the thing about Vim is that there's always going to be someone better than you. Always. It doesn't matter if you've used Vim for 20 years um, or, you know, Vi before that or whatever. You know, if you've spent a couple decades in this ecosystem and you consider yourself a really good Vim user, there's still going to be someone out there who knows more than you about Vim and how to do things that you don't know how to do. And that's the problem that I have with Vim. I consider Vim fantastic, but is the most emasculating piece of software I know of because if you think yourself good at something and then to find yourself that you're not actually that good at it, it can hurt a little bit. Now, a lot of that is probably good for you because it bursts your pride and bursts your ego and makes you realize, hey, you really don't know everything. Surprise, surprise. But on the other hand, it makes you feel like you're never going to perfect your use of that program. And I think that that is a feeling that a lot of them users have. You just realize that you may know a lot about using Vim, but you don't know everything and you're never going to know everything. You're never going to get to that point where you know how to do everything inside of Vim. Now, I'm sure that there are Vim experts out there that say, well, I know pretty much everything about Vim, but those people are going to be very, very rare. The most normal Vim users who have used it for a long time, you're going to have a set workflow of things that you know how to do right? The, the, just the stuff that you need to know, that's the stuff that you probably know. You probably know a little bit extra, you know, flowing around the per periphery, but you don't know all of it because you don't need to know all of it, right? And that's, at the end of the day, that's probably okay, Is and that's the best way of doing things in Vim. Just know what you have to know and just ignore the rest of it. But when you do see other people doing really awesome things in Vim, it's going to make you feel some kind of way about uh, your abilities inside of Vim. It's just will. And, I mean, some people probably say, well, you know, I don't really care. It's just a text editor. For you, that's probably true. But for other people who, you know, spend all day inside of it and have put blood, sweat, and tears into actually learning this thing to then find out that you are not as good as you thought you were is going to make you feel, like, as I said, some kind of way about it. So, Vim is a very good text editor. But my point in making this video is to allow people to realize that what you know about Vim is good and it's good enough. Don't beat yourself up if you don't know everything about Vim because you're never going to know everything about Vim. If all you've ever done is the Vim Tutor stuff and that's all you need to do in order to function your function through your workflow, your knowledge of Vim is just as valuable as my knowledge of Vim is just as knowledgeable as the Vim professional that you see on YouTube because it allows you to get your workflow done and that's really all that matters. Now, should that stop you from increasing your knowledge of cool things to do inside of Vim? No, but you shouldn't feel pressure to always get better at Vim simply because it's not necessarily something that is even going to be all that useful because it can become a bit of a time sink. Just because you happen to know more about Vim doesn't necessarily mean your workflow is going to be more efficient. It doesn't mean that it won't. It just doesn't mean that it's a guarantee. So, at the end of the day, Vim is one of those programs where you kind of have to be self-aware enough to know, do I need to continue my journey in terms of learning stuff here, or is what I've done so far enough? So, that's kind of a rambly video, so I don't even know if there was a point somewhere in there. I hope you got something from it. If you did, and you want to talk about Vim a little bit more, leave a comment in the comment section below. It really does help out the channel. You can also hit the like button. That helps out the channel. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are absolutely amazing people. I'm so thankful for your guys' support. I'm just blown away constantly. So thanks for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.